Duyen. So some of you, many of you have actually already sent um, a request to do a reaction on Sarah's Duyen, Sarah Hieronymus Duyen. And um, some of you complain that many of those that are actually reacting don't actually say anything substantial. <laughs> and you said that it is uh, an injustice to what Sarah was able to do for this video. So um, I do like Sarah, but we've loved her. So this is the first time I'm actually seeing, hearing this song, watching this video. So let's get to it. Play. For those of you who don't know, Duyan means hammock for the uh, uh, Westerners that are watching me. So they're like uh, a little jazzy. Um, her outfit is a little bit Michael Jackson. A little Broadway, a little bit of that Chicago vibe. See, that's why I like her, just that perfect, she's giving the right amount in her songs. So, um, so just to expand on what I said, I like her because uh, you know that I am a very chill person <laughs> in general. So I, I don't mind all the belting. I don't mind, you know, those high notes and stuff. But I don't, I mind it if it is not necessary in the song and not necessary in the emotions of the song. That's one. Second is I mind it if the singer has no control over his voice anymore. Singing is one thing. Screaming, screaming is another. Sarah is that kind of a singer who's always in control of her voice. Even when she's belting out in the highest notes, she's in control. She's singing, not, not screaming. And she knows exactly the right tone to give in order to perfectly capture the emotion. To, to, and she's shown that here. Second, um, the, I like the combination of that. There's a little bit of Broadway in there. There's a little classical feel in there, a little bit of Michael Jackson, so very much pop. Um, did I say Broadway already? And a little jazz in there. So sh she's combining different genres together. Um, and then I've always loved irony. <laughs> I always love oxymorons in, in all the different ways you can apply it, whether it's in writing or in the combination of writing and singing and whatever. But so here she was able, she's dancing to a slow song. Um, and this is the type of dance that you would usually associate to faster beats. And so the, the, just the basic thing of her having that creativity to combine two different elements together is already giving the song a different kind of layer, a different types, a different dimension in terms of meaning, uh, in terms of feel. Um, so it, it, it seems like a love song. Of course, I, there's still not much I have heard yet. But the lyrics is very soothing. There's, um, I've always said this about Filipino writers. <laughs> We're always so poetic in what we write. We don't just write beats we don't just write uh lyrics and we don't we don't count on like um uh like catchphrases there's always a poetry in 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 what we do and that's what we're we have here in the song um i've never seen her perform like this so 
She's pushing it. She's pushing it. So just that uh, it's a very Filipino, very much a Filipino ballad in the melody and the way that she's singing it. You know, it's a, like the type of song you will hear in a harana, <laughs> right? So it's very soothing, very much a love song. So I love that part. It's very still, very very much a uh, very very much Filipino still, but um, so it seems like this is a song she's singing to. A, a boy, I would assume boyfriend or whatever. <laughs> so, um, but the way that she's dressed and the way that she's moving, she shifts. She would not, yeah, yeah. She would uh, shift between masculine to androgynous to very female. So brilliant cho choreography um, here. So when she does this part, this melody. That this this part right here is very much uh, a Filipino ballad, and then she would ship into this very much a masculine, and then go feminine, and then masculine again. So it's such a versatile performance. I don't think this is one shot, but it does feel like that. At least, yeah, I don't, there, there are cuts. Oh yeah, there are cuts, okay. I thought it was going to be like one shot. No. And um, Singing in the Rain, what's his name? What's the guy's name? Reminds me a little bit of that as well. I like how she's pushing her artistry. Yeah, it's very much MJ. <laughs> By the way, when I say that, I'm not saying she's copying MJ. I'm saying that this is a good... Um, she used the style of MJ as a transit, as a takeoff point. Um, obviously, the choreography is very unique. Uh, the treatment is very unique. Even her treatment of her, of her song is very unique. Okay, I'm not saying she's copying her. Don't you come at me saying that I'm accusing Filipinos of copying. Ah. Did she actually... Did she actually study tap dancing for this? If you know, let me know. And the way she's been able to change her looks, that's another thing. So different. So I've, um, I've always loved her voice. I've always loved how she interprets the song. I've always loved her as a performer. Um, but I think one of the things that I find very, very pleasurable, pleasurable in this is seeing her push the envelope a little in who she is as an, as an artist. I think Tala was such a, a phenomenal a phenomenal single, a phenomenal performance. So everything is phenomenal with that. Um, and I think like any other performer would say that the one the most one of the most difficult things you can ever do is try to outdo that great hit that you've had right and there's a lot of singers who who destroy themselves trying to outdo themselves 
Um, I think she's take, she's doing it the right way in that she's taking it in a different direction instead of trying to outdo herself, which is a sign of growth as a real artist. And just the way that she's moving is so, so different. Um, I've never seen her move this way. The way that she's doing those isos, <laughs> those isolations, you would think that she's like a professional hip-hop dancer. But there, her isos are so on point. Yeah, right. that's an isolation. And the way that she's able to combine those elements of hip hop into something a bit more classical and a bit more jazzy uh, in her movement is you can you almost can't learn it. This is something you either have that you can just hone, but you can't have it if you were if you've never had it in the beginning. See, even her vibrato. This is what I'm talking about. I don't mind if people are shaking their vibrato for as long as they're able to communicate their the the song. The, the emotions of the song. Um, but she has so much control. The way she would transition into that breathy kind of uh, chest voice. This is this a dance break? See? <laughs> it feels like, she, like she's been training for hip hop for like years on end. Oh, wow. Even those pops, she's got it down. <laughs> she's got it down. It's just whoever choreographed this dance, the way that she was able to combine different genres in one dance. You have all of those pops, but then you're still you're still like a little Broadway in this, and you have that very jazzy kind of feel into it. Just and the way she, of course Sarah is executing it. Um, I absolutely can't find anything wrong with this performance video. So I think I've always struggled in um, foreign songs, how they would go into, uh, when they approach like the end of the song, uh, they would, they, there's always this practice of just repeating certain lines uh, or certain sections of the song over and over and again until it fades out. Some of them actually do it just to make the minimum <laughs> number of minutes that you need the song to be for it to be uh, qualified to be played on the radio. But I've always said, like, if you're going to do that, put something into it so that it actually becomes a necessary part of the song. Don't just repeat the lines or the section of the song over and over and just for you to put it there. Um, and I think this is, again, such a sign of a great, artist because she was able to do that like she would treat each time that she would repeat that line she would give it a different treatment so it doesn't sound boring like as a listener why are you saying that thing 10 times <laughs> just say it once i get it 
got, but she was able to give that the proper treatment. The diff different types of vocal treatment whenever she says the line. See? Then different treatment, right? It's the same line, but just this is a different treatment. Like even as a narrative, now it feels like man, those ISOs are just just better than many hip hop dancers. <laughs> so the even the now it, it it even makes me feel like her repeating this line over and over again is necessary for her to communicate the emotions she's trying to communicate. That's how you do the same. That's how you sing. Okay. Oh, G4. So it's the same people that choreographed Tala. All right, everybody. That's Concept by Sarah? Seriously impressed. <laughs> wow. Um, I think I've said everything I've, I've wanted to say about the song and about the performance. I think just as an artist, just want to emphasize, I'm so happy how to see seeing her grow. Like she's trying to push the envelope what, of what she can do, what she's capable of as an artist without losing the interest of her audience. Um, she's always been like a classical kind of a singer, not classical, but a classic for us. Like she's the um, she's the perfect singer for a, she's a perfect Filipino balladeer. Um, but but she's uh, at the same time she's trying to push like her limits and go different ways with trying out different genres, trying out different things when it comes to dancing. Um, and still, she's able to keep her audience engaged. Um, yeah, and I, I it's just I think this entire thing is uh, is just perfect. It's just perfect. And I wish, you know, I wish this is how we take, um, you know, the music video as an art in the Philippines. We take it towards this direction. Like, um, let's make it a another art art form instead of just a, a promotional material that we will use to support uh, a single. Thank you for recommending this. <laughs>